is Adam Broad of Liberation Republic Public Eye. Hi, guys. we got special guest Chuck Ford. Uh, we are on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I know, guys, it's a little bit different uh, because of the current setup I'm working on with recording and, uh, you know, getting multiple people together for interviews and stuff. Uh, I don't have the technology or the knowledge and haven't tested my systems yet uh, to do a video interview, which will happen sometime down the line with this wonderful gentleman here. We got Chuck Ford, the Liberty Geek, a show many times more popular than mine. Uh, he's already got four episodes up. This will be my third episode uh, with this wonderful gentleman, so I'm hoping to get the uh, the Liberty Geek bump uh, to put me a little bit more into the spotlight. Uh, we've got a few topics we're going to cover. Um, well, I guess we'll start with... Uh, you know, how things going for you, Chuck? Got anything initially on your mind uh, that you want to maybe uh, preview for your show upcoming? Uh, let's keep in mind that this show will be airing this upcoming Wednesday, the 25th. So if you've got your show on the 27th, an idea ready to go running for that, uh, want to uh, want to reveal something? If you don't want to, I understand. Uh, no, I haven't. It's not a fact that I don't want to. It's just I haven't gone. <laughs> admittedly, I haven't gone that far. I mean. The episode you guys will see, which will air, this will air after that, is I'm going to have Adam on my show as a guest for that, and we're going to talk about the free software move it, why I disagree with most of it, but still agree with certain parts of it, and I think that's going to be a good show, and hopefully we'll we'll hopefully inform some people of what's what's wrong and what's right in a society of free minds, you know, so I can't wait. Right, and that, you know, I'm I'm just super pumped, and and thank you for the opportunity. I know we're gonna be oh, no you know problem. doing a circle jerk of of thank yous to each other uh, <laughs> over the course of the rest of our lifetime on here. You know, oh, thanks oh. for having me on this. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank oh, you. It was such a oh, it was oh, such oh, a great oh. opportunity. I can't wait to come back. Hold the exposure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> if people could have I, seen I what I just you. did, they would actually probably shut the 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 video off. Um. <laughs> So the reason we wanted to come together on this video, uh, you know, kind of go outside of not necessarily his comfort zone, but uh, the wonderful Liberty Geek here decided while we were chit-chatting yesterday on a special we're going to be recording down the line, which we'll reveal and do an announcement on a little bit later in the show. Uh, we wanted to talk about the anti-homeless sidewalk spikes uh, and other uh, homeless hurting, uh, you know, government actions out there. Because, uh, you know, we see countless things where church church kitchens are getting shut down to feed the homeless. Homeless shelters are getting shut down, uh, you know, by the government for trivial reasons, even if they're privately funded. Uh, and then, you know, we see these uh, these pictures and these videos and uh, these articles all over the place about these uh, anti-homeless spikes. And these are just barbaric. And you see these, these are just right out of, uh, you know, medieval times. These are like torture devices that you just won't see anywhere and it it blows my mind you're the one that wanted to talk about this uh fire away what do you got all right so i'm i'm kind of torn on the homeless spikes on one hand it's private property where these a lot of the places from what i understand is private property where they're putting their spikes on so that's one issue but on the other issue it's about oh mm, you come up to these homeless spikes, and they just look... It almost looks really tacky on your property. You know what I'm saying? It's like... It almost looks... It makes your store look uninviting. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so... I'm kind of torn. I think that the companies should... Private companies should have the right to put those spikes in. But I would probably not recommend it because it looks really tacky to me. And, you know, right. And I, yeah. I don't want to walk into a torture shop. <laughs> right. No, definitely. And uh, one thing I'm going to pop up on screen here, assuming my editing prowess is what it should be. And it's not complete tomfoolery bullshit. Um, there's an article through China smack dot com. Uh, some of these pictures and these are public spaces that some of these are on, you know, under the overpasses and under bridges and stuff like that. I mean, just these concrete spikes that are, you know, six inches to a foot away from each other that are, you know, almost a half a foot tall that are just super, you know, spiky. Uh, and, you know, why? There's all this cry out uh, from all these government officials that, 
oh, we need to help the homeless. You know, the, these capitalists, these private companies don't want to help, help the homeless. But, you know, we got to step up. We got to, you know, welfare programs. And then they do this. Right. You know, what? what's the yeah, motivation? This isn't exactly helpful. And, okay, I'm not, I don't believe in having a government, but if you're going to have one and you call it public space, you call it public space, okay? You're you're basically being a hypocrite if you call it public space and then you put these spikes up saying, no one can step here. You know, it's public, but you can't step here. And it just drives me bonkers. Now, what in a utopian society, we would have a government, and this wouldn't be a problem because we'll get to that in a little bit because, because there's so many other things that the private sector has done to help homeless. Maybe we aren't throwing homes at them all, all the time, but we've we've done things you know soup kitchens uh you know donation drives those don't come from the government those come from the private sector and i think this is just another way that the governments are just trying to keep the people under control and drives me nuts well and and that raises the question in in your opinion uh and with your analysis you know with all these government people wanting to you know give more handouts and get more votes by handing out more free stuff why is it that they're they're taking this violent route? They've already got these people under their thumb. Uh, you know, they're already got these people in their wallets. Uh, and these are the people who are so dependent, allegedly, on the state, because, again, allegedly the, the, the free market or the private sector has failed them. You know, why is the state taking these kind of steps? Uh, you know, why do you think this is happening? You know, it's hard to answer that question. I, I don't have all the answers, but I think this is kind of – I think it's an intimidation tactic. As, uh, we ha it, it does – they already do have these people under their thumb. It's, you know, we have you under our thumb. Now you go where we want you to or we beat the crap out of you and stop giving you the free – the quote-unquote free stuff that we promised you. It's easily an intimidation tactic to keep everyone in line. That's my thought. My opinion. My right, opinion. right, absolutely. And I, I would tend to agree with that. Uh, you know, I, I just pulled up an article on the Washington City paper. Uh, Senator Graham calls for shutting down D.C. general shelter by year's end. Um, and this is, and I think a lot of this, uh, you know, there's, there's an argument to be said that there's a lot of just stupid rubes in the government who don't know what they're doing, who think they're doing, you know, this great altruistic thing. Um, but they're just going about it all wrong. Because, you know, I would say that there are a... There's a percentage of people who are involved in government who are well-meaning, uh, who aren't looking to, you know, be they, these controllers. They change it from the inside. Right, and and even people you who know. just are so passionate about, you know, homeless people or, you know, some other uh, project that helps the people, uh, this is the only way they see it done because that's how they're, they've been educated. Uh, but I think right. a lot of this, you know, at least from Senator Graham, uh, he wants to to shut down shelters and some people want to shut down these shelters and these operations because they want to hide the homeless numbers. Um, you know, there, Which, there's some, yeah. there's some evil, dirty fucking people out there who just want to hide all these problems, not take it head on. <laughs> and you know what? And here's the thing. Okay. Nothing's perfect. And I will, I will be the first to admit in an anarcho capitalist society. Yes, there will be homeless. However, in a, in a anarcho-capitalist society, these there won't be these states. Look at New York, okay? Remember when Katrina happened, or was it Katrina? I th can't remember the name of the hurricane. But you know what I'm talking about. That hurricane came through, and all these people tried to volunteer, you know, feed the people who had been knocked homeless by this hurricane. And the mayor turned them around and said, "No, you can't feed them. Oh, you're not wearing a hairnet." Oh, we can't check the salt content of this. Go away. Like, really? These are just people trying to use their own spare time to help them out. And you're saying that we're not allowed to feed the homeless uh, because you can't check the salt content? What, are you trying to kill them off? I mean, And yeah. it's, it's, it's just a disgusting thing that a lot of these, these government and, you know, people are getting involved in. Um, boy, it's... There's there's a beautiful video that I saw on YouTube. Uh, I browse around a lot, uh, almost too much. Uh, 
I don't want to reveal how many hours I've spent on YouTube browsing cat videos. It makes me sick that I've done so many. Uh, but there's this one video. There's this one YouTuber. I forget his name. I'll put the link in the description below. Um, and I'll see if I can actually interview him later. Um, he actually crowdfunded a house uh, for a homeless guy that he had given like $100 to or made a, like a fake lottery ticket kind of thing. Is it... Uh, Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah! Oh, Magic of Rehat. Yes, that guy. Is that who you're yeah, talking yeah. about? That... Yeah, that homeless seen guy. He gave this guy a a home of his own, uh, a yeah. TV. You know, fully furnished, everything. Just gave this guy a house. Mm-hmm. Does the state ever do that? On his own, without a state intervention, on his own time, yeah. and he used his personable skills to do this. And in the in, in the free society. There'd be a lot of people that I believe would do that. Well, I was, uh, you know, all these crowdfunding Easily. platforms, everything from, you know, Kickstarter and Indiegogo to the ones who, you know, do exclusively for causes or who you literally just put a request out there, say, hey, I need this much money. Here's why. Even it may seem trivial. I need money for bills. I need money for this or that. If you have enough pull out there and there's enough people who sympathize with your cause, you will get that funding. Churches are also fantastic, whether you're religious or not. Churches are fantastic for their charity. The Catholic Church uh, numbers out there show that they're, you know, one of the largest charities out there. Uh, you know, at least with their charitable givings, uh, you know, in helping, you know, the homeless, the sick, the needy, you know, what right. have you. The state, not so much. Not so much. Like, oh, hey, you give us these taxes and we're going to redistribute it to these homeless people and keep about 75% of it or whatever arbitrary number it is now. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, so we to turn this kind of more into your wheelhouse, being the Liberty Geek here on uh, the Voluntary Virtues Network, pick a video game. What are these spikes? What are these uh, you know tyrannical forms of anti-homeless legislation and sidewalk spikes and all that shit in the public areas? Is there any game out there that reminds you of this kind of stuff? And what road do they, does that take us down? Oh, <laughs> curveball. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah, that was a huge curveball. But I I don't know necessarily about anti-homeless legislation, but this this tends to remind me of like the um stuff where we've seen where we've seen like uh hard okay, front oh, oh crap, what was the name of that game? Home front. Home front. It, it was a game where it was a very status game, but it was a game where uh, the United States. It was a, it was a mediocre game. It had an interesting story, but the United States was invaded and uh, taken over by North Korea of all people. This was back before the whole North Korean missile scare thing, but North Korea invades somehow manages to invade and occupy the United States. And, you know, they start putting in all this, you know, registration, curfews, and you must be home by this time. You must be home by this time. You know, <laughs> Nothing for you. Oh, that was awful. <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> but you get the idea, though, for real. Like they were saying, you know, it was, and, you know, a lot of people were losing their homes because, you know, it was a war zone, you know. So, I mean, kind of reminds me of that, but... Because it almost is like a war on the homeless, and not the good kind of war on the homeless, you know? I mean, this is almost like keeping them back down, you know? So that's kind of reminds me of, but homeless spikes? Eh. You threw me a huge curveball. <laughs> well, that just means you're going to get one set that I'm going to I'm going to have to look. Th- I'm literally going to look this up, and I'll message you two days later, like, God damn it, I have a better answer for this Well, now. hey, if you want to clarify that on... Uh... One of my net, you know, shows following down the road. You know, we'll, oh, well, totally. we'll do that. I mean, you're going to become a regular guest. I actually, frankly, want to have you on as a monthly guest of mine, uh, just be because beautiful. I fuck our dynamic has been hilarious over the last just there two days. So it, it's thank you, a... thank you very much, thank you very much for having me on your show. <laughs> <laughs> we actually just probably just need to get a, a cam show for us through some of them uh, naughty sites and. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. That way they can see the circle jerk of thanks being actually to yes. completion. <laughs> <laughs> and there again, my oh, uh, show is now shut down. Sorry, Michael. Uh, I'll leave the uh, network. Uh, 
thanks for shutting my. Now you got my show shut down too. Thanks. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, all right. So, you mentioned earlier with these spikes, how on private property, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, make your case. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it because it's private. Now, like I said, it would probably look really tacky, and it would, if you're a business owner, yeah. I mean, it's gonna make your it's gonna make your building look very intimidating and not very open and very welcoming if that's your goal of trying to get people to shop in your business if it's a shop. But I do believe that people do have the right to do with their private property because essentially, it is private property. And if for some reason you don't want homeless people sitting in front of your private property, sure, that's your right, and it's your right to try to come up with ways to hire security guards or put down these spikes keep these people off the property like i said because it is your property i wouldn't tell you how to drive your car you know what i'm you know you get right. what i'm saying i wouldn't tell you how you should paint your house unless i was your neighborhood association but that's a whole different story i wouldn't tell you what decorations you can have inside i wouldn't take tell you that you can take down i wouldn't tell you you have to take down those posters you know what i'm saying right. i wouldn't tell you that you can't put those spikes on your property right right and you know, this then turns into how do we deal with the problem, if you want to even consider it a problem, of those who are homeless who have, whether by their choice and their actions or by the simple, you know, wrong place, wrong time or their you know, unfortunate yeah. circumstances, how do we deal with, you know, homeless people sleeping on the streets, pissing on the side of buildings, you know, setting fires in barrels right next to a, uh, an asbestos plant or some shit? I don't know. How, how do we deal with that? I don't know. I, now, I don't have all the answers, but I think the way we can deal with that is, first, you have to remember, in a, in a capital, especially in a capitalist society, you will never get rid of the problem 100% of the time. Never. It'll always be there. So instead, you set up private charities. You set up... you you Entrepreneurs, out of the goodness of their heart, can... Even if even even if it's not to get into their heart, even if it's just for the publicity, they can buy some of these empty houses and set them up as sh temporary shelters for the homeless, where they can stay every so often while they're looking while they're trying to get on their feet. Or they can buy a building to turn into a soup kitchen, and you know you're never gonna get rid of it. But if you don't believe, and I think that's how you quote unquote fight. And, this yeah, issue. I tend to agree with that. Uh, in fact, I'm. Uh, I would make the argument that in a in a free market, capitalist society, volunteer society, whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, everybody thinks that it's going to be this dog-eat-dog, -dog, you know, uh, zero-sum game kind of thing, where somebody has to lose, somebody has to win. Well, no. I mean, right. inevitably, somebody is going to lose if they misuse their resources. If, uh, you know, a business does not do things in a way that is conducive to profit. But, these kind of situations right. will be solved because people are going to want to get together and cooperate. I mean, who knows? Maybe a bunch of these homeless people will get their meager capital together and run a lemonade stand that'll get them just enough money to check into a hotel for one night to clean up. Because they won't need right, a they won't permit, need a permit for it. They'll just do their own shit. You know, they, churches will have the freedom to feed these people. Uh, you know, businesses will have the opportunity uh, to give these people job offers uh, with almost no risk and no issue of the minimum wage. Uh, you know, there will be so many more mm -hmm. opportunities uh, for the homeless, the underemployed, the sick, the needy, that all you have to do is go out there or have somebody help you reach out to the people who they think can help. And I've been kind of Googling shit as I've been talking with you or listening to you. Um, apparently there is a homeless si simulation game. Uh on playspent.org uh, so maybe that needs to turn into a let's play live stream at some point uh, just for fun just to see what happens I don't know just an idea to throw your way I've played I've done this well actually. what's your impressions on it then I've actually done I, yeah I actually went through this uh, oddly enough it was <laughs> in my status school uh, we were doing sociology class <laughs> which you know the status of status classes but that's not the point the point is is that you know, we were talking about, you know, how about stuff like this. And we went through. Uh, it wasn't like a homeless. There is the homeless simulation game, but the spent 
the placement.org thing is more of a less homeless and more low income type situation. Like you are, I believe you're a single parent. You have to choose between you want to live closer to work with higher rent, uh, farther from work with lower rent, but higher gas, gas prices and travel time and stuff like that. And then it talks about, well, insurance and, do you want to drive without car insurance and all sorts of interesting things, which, first of all, car insurance wouldn't be even an issue if we didn't have a government mandating that we needed to buy in the first place. Because if I trust myself as a driver, then I'll take the risk. Right. And then, but, you know, if, you happen, if you do that today, right, if you, you happen to break your car, you know, well, either you can fork. Well, that's the other thing, too, with all these insurances. Uh, you know, for example, I was in a single car wreck of my own. Uh, I uh, it was uh, an icy patch on the road or whatever. It, it was during the winter. Uh, and I was driving fairly slowly or reasonably, I think. I was following my girlfriend and her dad. or I forget what the exact situation was, but I hit a patch. I did a 360 on the road, and I went off into a ditch. And then since you were playing Burnout, it gave right, you a exactly. no, that was awesome. Um, that. Um, you know, I didn't <laughs> hit anything that I saw, but... Uh, you know, the, I guess, with going off the road. Also, I should say earlier on in that month, I hit a coyote with the same car. Um, big fucking animal. I oh, tore that job. thing to shreds, uh, and it tore all the cables and the the hoses and stuff on the other side to shred. So, uh, yeah, mutually uh, assured destruction on that. But the insurance company mm -hmm. wouldn't cover it, or they said, this is totaled, uh, you know, we don't want to cover any of this stuff. I would I would make the argument that in a free market society, these insurance companies would, you know, based on the terms of your contract, uh, more than likely help you pay for it. Yeah, they would just say, hey, based on terms of your contract, we will cover this much, we, or we will we'll give, give, give you an extension of this amount of money if you do X, Y, Z. That is not possible in this current construct because of the state. And on, on top of that, here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. And a cap free market capitalism, a lot of people assume that capitalism is just money, but it, it's not. In a free market capitalist society, you and I are not only free to trade money, but we're free to trade goods and services. So let's say I'm your insurance company. I don't want to cover the full cost of your car for whatever reason. Maybe you're an idiot. I don't know. But let's say I'm your insurance company. I don't want to do that. Instead, I could. And you say, well, I don't have the money to pay for the rest of it. I could, as a company, say, okay, fine, I'll pay this much, and in return, you can, you can, you know, give us, you know, your cows, or let's say you're a farmer, you could give us some of your cows, or you could run deliveries for us. You know, there are so many other options that you could do to pay off your end. You know through errands, through trading of the items, you know. Right, I mean, and, you know, I would almost, yeah. you know, say that some of these insurance companies would probably, you know, if you got into an accident because of your own stupidity, you know, maybe these companies would be, hey, you know, if you want to earn this, you have to go through these training modules to become a safe driver. Or, you know, maybe yeah. in the case if you drive to get to work, if you're a commuter, uh, you know, you could work with your employer to garnish some of your wages so that you have no chance of fucking that up. Uh, you can make it on a percentage basis yeah. or, you know, make it to where you're not going to fuck up the rest of your life and the rest of your bills. Uh, you just have to tighten your belt right. on you know, going out to McDonald's every day. There will be so many alternative – there's so many – in a free market, there are so many alternative payment methods of – because you could also say, well, I don't have enough dollars to pay this off, but I also – I have some Bitcoin. And I could be like, yeah, sure, we could take your Bitcoin. You know, it's just – there's always in a free market society there's always something right you can do for anything you can do anything yeah, for anything absolutely and that Literally. uh you know maybe in some insurance circles you could uh do things of a sexual nature to the ceo to get more money who knows i mean it, it's it, possible it, i mean okay as weird as that is it's totally true I mean, let's 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 face it. Prostitution huge everywhere. The oldest <laughs> profession they call it. Actually, so, I would make the argument that the oldest in profession all, in is all... the state. But yeah, you know. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. But 
Bazinga! But for real, though, I mean, anything for anything, really. Yeah. And that's... I mean, your insurance company might literally ask for sticks. Right, right. So, uh, basically, that's that's all the show's uh, really going to be about. Uh, I don't know exactly offhand how long this show has been going on because we've been I've been recording for 50 minutes, but this interview has only been going on for much less than that. Uh, so we're just going to wrap up the interview right here. Uh, do you have anything you want to plug? Uh, actually, announcement. We have to do that. We got to fit that into the video. Even have to do some editing magic. Yeah, um, this. There's this exciting thing that uh, right. we're getting involved in. It is co-branded uh, by uh, the Liberty Geek and Rose to Liberty. Fire away. What is this exciting project Fire. that I'm just so pumped to be a part of? Go. All right, guys. Thanks partly to Adam, especially for having interest in it. Um, the Liberty Geek Liberty Geek Show and uh, Roads to Liberty, we're going to be co-producing or co -producing this thing where I'm going to be running something called a Dungeon World game. And Dungeon World is kind of like, you've probably heard of Dungeons and Dragons. It's kind of similar. Everyone makes a character. They roll some dice. Their characters do some, some stuff, maybe some fighting, maybe some talking. And I believe um, it's just about to go crazy. And I would like to thank you, Adam. I'd like to thank Randall Parker Jr. I'd like to thank Robert Kruger. And I'd especially like to thank Michael Shanklin. For all of them are going to participate in this game that I'm going to tell a story for. They're going to tell me their piece of the story back. And it's going to be a liberty-based story. And I can't wait to do this. Thank you so oh, hey, much for playing. You're most welcome. I'm, I'm pumped to see what's going to come I, out of it. Uh, we already kind of discussed I this do. for uh, my personal channel that's going to go up maybe probably after this video goes up. Um, what's... What possessed you to want to do this? Uh, how did you convince Michael Shanklin to do this uh, or to let this happen? Is this something that's going to be something viable in the future? And here's another curveball. I've done two on the same Voluntary Virtues Network show. I'm sorry. I actually, I'm not sorry. Suck it. Um, is this the script or the, the story that you're going to be basing everything off of? Will you ever make that public for everybody to download and kind of do their own iterations of the game? Okay, so here's the thing. I'll, I'll, I'll do this one at a time, not necessarily in order. Would I like this to happen more than once? Absolutely. Uh, it really depends on how much interest this garners from viewers. You know, obviously, I'm not going to, you know, do this again if they absolutely hate it and it makes them puke their guts out. But the way I got this is, I mean, I have a Saturday group. We run some... One of the games we run at some Saturdays is Dungeon World. Sometimes we play it a little bit of everything. Don't rest your head, for example. And I thought, I do this every Saturday anyways. Why don't I get a bunch of Voluntary Virtue Network hosts who can use this as an opportunity to plug their shows, teach them a little bit about one of my, one of my many hobbies, right? Teach them a little bit about it, maybe get them into it. And... At the same time, for anyone who does understand these ho these games, I can use this and use it for a liberty-minded message of a liberty-minded story, which will hopefully get people right, thinking. Right, that's, that's really what this whole network's all about. It's about education and you know, being a one-stop shop for everyone who's interested in libertarianism, volunteerism, anarchism, anarcho-capitalism, whatever the hell you want to call it. Mm-hmm. As for how I got it started, um, I made a joke about it uh, around Randall, and Randall was like, "Yo, you should, you should ask." Uh, well, he didn't say ah, probably. But he <laughs> said, "You should totally." <laughs> no, <laughs> that that's me app living for Randall. But he said, "You know, you should ask Michael about this." I'm like, "No, Michael's not gonna go for this. Michael's a normal person." <laughs> so. <laughs> I, I went over to him, and I and there was a little trouble at first, because, you know, when we do it on Saturday, I explain, we take five hours out of a day to do this, okay? You you can't get anything meaningful done out of five hours. And he's like, okay, fine, but how are you going to upload something that's five hours long? I'm like, mm, crap, <laughs> shit. So I, I agreed that, okay, record for five hours, but we upload it in one-hour chunks. So it's like a multi-part series. And he agreed to that, and then he finally agreed to play it. 
which I'm really excited since he's the big boss dog of Voluntary Virtues Network, and I'm really curious to see someone who might not have ever played any of these games before. Most of you probably haven't. Randall said he played Dungeons and Dragons once, I think. So maybe, but I'm really curious. I get to teach you guys a new, uh, some of you guys a new hobby, while at the same time reinforcing, seeing if your characters will follow what you preach. I can't wait. Right. So uh, you, you've kind of dodged the question that I mentioned earlier. Maybe I should put it a different way. Um, you know, from what I understand, these stories are not one that you know you write from beginning to end. Obviously, there's the player interaction, and that is something you can never script. Is the, the general synopsis, the whole idea, maybe the rules that maybe you are going to impose differently uh, than what the standard you know dra- uh, dungeon world story type setup is? Is this something you're going to make public? Um. Uh, yes and no. I mean, as you said, you can't publish, you can't write the whole story and publish it from end to end. That just makes you a terrible storyteller for your players. But if you see what you like, like if you see the story and you realize this is the kind of a route that I want to take with my players in the setting, I would say go for it. You have my permission to do what you want with it. You can use the exact same villain names if you want or change them. I don't really care. Um... As long as if you have a party, bard in your party, you kill them first because Adam's a bard and he's already strong. <laughs> well, I, I'm not going to be a red shirt. I don't plan on at least. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Maybe. I mean, bar, everyone hates bards. I mean, all they do is they sing and then they try to get laid. I'm probably going to get an STD and then I'm I mean, just going to die off slowly. Yo, I will I will roll the dice and make sure that you <laughs> die a horrible Awesome, I look forward. Then I'll just reincarnate as a ghost bard and uh <laughs> That sounds like that would be like an awesome TV show. Like Ghost Bard Like an yes. awesome eighties cartoon. Like, like you write a theme song about him and it's just like Ghost Bard and it's just him doing all these actions. Oh and I, oh and if we had to be the bard from White Run in Skyrim <laughs> yes. Oh, that guy's a sniveling yes, bitch too. But he's, yeah, but he's a bard, or he's not a yeah, ghost. So now ghost. he's a ghost. So like you can see through him. You can see through him, and he's doing all oh, these action shots. And then he follows he's got his own the dungeons so through the wall ghost and scares bird. the fuck out of you while you're facing down. Oh, okay, we've got a yeah. new show idea. So uh. Yeah. Yep. I'm, yep. Yep, well, um, we're going to copyright this right now. Ghost Bard. Uh, now, wait CW a minute, 50. wait a minute. Oh, Intellectual no. property is illegitimate. <laughs> blur- Anyways, well, <laughs> awesome shit. I, I've been really happy with this interview. Uh, we'll see what I'm cutting and pasting and moving around in the interview because there's an hour's worth of content that I need to condense into less than 30 minutes. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, so definitely thank you uh, for you know being willing to sit down and do what's amounted to the last basically two hours of your life uh, dedicated to uh, you know what? humoring me. So it's, it's a I blast. Thank you. For the love of God, everybody, if you haven't stopped watching this show already to go and watch his, do so now. Come back and watch the ending of this. Watch his shit first. He is so entertaining. Just He's a joy to have on the channel, uh, and it's just fantastic that I've been able to meet you know such strong people oh, man, like, Adam, like Chuck, like Randall, like Michael Shanklin. Go to him watch his stuff, especially if you're in the game culture, the nerd culture, you like movies, you like fantasy, you like any of that stuff. Check him out. Uh, and we're, he's, I know, uh, based on some of the conversations I've had, that we're going to start getting a lot more gaming content, uh, or at least gaming-themed uh, conversations going. For what oh, in yeah. the comments oh, section below yeah. a video nerd game you want a uh, an analysis on? Something. We need some interaction. Let Chuck know what you want to see, and for that matter, let me know what you want to see. I, this is my third episode that's going to go up. I've had exactly one person give me ideas for a show, and it's the guy on the other end of this conversation. Uh, so uh, help me out, guys. I want to make my show be what it wants, what you guys want it to be about. That's the beauty of the market. So let us know in the comment section below. Blow up his channel feeds or his uh, his show feeds. Tell us what you want to talk about. Plug all your stuff. I know you've got a separate channel as well, uh, focused on gaming. Plug that. Plug your show, uh, and then we'll wrap it up. 
Right, sure. I'll 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 do it as a special uh a special intro. So uh uh and we're live. What's up, internet? This is Chuck the Liberty Geek. My pick of E3 was Rainbow Six Siege, and let's talk some anarchy. <laughs> For real though, um, I'm Chuck the Liberty Geek from uh Liberty Geek Show and Voluntary Virtues Network. Uh, brought to you by Michael Shanklin. I I guess you could put it that way. Um. But um, I have another channel, which is little by a little, I mean way less known, uh, called The Atlantic Bromance with my uh, best friend of all time, Matt. And the reason why it's called The Atlantic Bromance is we live on opposite ends of the Atlantic. He's English. I'm American. America. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, I'm American. And um, we only have one video on the channel, but we have four episodes in editing right now. So watch for those. We also have a Twitch.tv stream that I stream through. Uh, Twitch.tv slash The Atlantic Bromance. I believe it is. And, yep, Twitch.tv slash The Atlantic Bromance. And I had so much fun today, Adam. And I can't wait to see you on my show on Friday. And where we'll talk about the Free Software Foundation, the free software movement. And I can't wait. All right. It's gonna awesome. Be great. Well, uh, thanks for the time. Uh it's been a blast, and we'll uh, we'll talk to you later. This has been Adam Broad of Liberation Republic. I saying peace and love and liberty, y'all.